Side hustles. Why are there so many horrible ones on YouTube? Why do so many YouTubers make the exact same video? Telling people to take surveys where they're gonna make like 15 cents an hour. What's happening? It's Shane here. So I've done videos on the past where I've talked about side hustles that I've actually done when I was in college and high school that actually worked and made pretty decent money. And these videos were great, but I realized that I shouldn't just limit myself to the ones that I've done. That would be like limiting yourself to just smashing the like button for the evil YouTube algorithm when you could also subscribe. And so in this video, I did some research. I looked at the literature to find the most common side hustles and exactly how much they pay. And this is great because a lot of these side hustles are ones that anyone can do no matter where you're from. Whereas some of the side hustles I talked about in my video were ones where you can only do it during the winter or you can only do it in certain parts of the country. And then we can compare all these side hustles. I'll give you my opinion on each one of them and then we can see how they all stack up. Number 10 on the list is going to be direct sales. Now this was based off of research done by creditloan.com. Now according to them, they make somewhere between $100 and $1,230 a month, and they also make around $7 an hour. Now this could be any number of different types of jobs. This could be like a sales job for a company uh, over the phone. This could be a door-to-door -door sales job. Now obviously $7 an hour is not that great. That's actually below minimum wage. And so for that reason, I don't think it's one of the better ones on the list, but I will say one thing for direct sales. I think when it comes to side hustles, you want to keep this concept in mind, which is winning even if you lose. Now, what do I mean by that? There are certain types of side hustles where the skills that you learn when you do that side hustle, even if you're not successful, you don't really make all that much money or anything, the skills that you learn are going to be valuable for you during the rest of your life. Direct sales is a perfect example of this. Even if you don't make that much money, I feel like everybody should do a sales job at some point during their life because it is literally one of the most valuable skills you can learn. It will help you in every area of your life, no matter where you go into or what you end up doing. So for that reason, I still think this is a side hustle that's worth doing. You should just be smart about which company that you go for. So you probably don't want to become a high ticket closer, for instance. The next one on the list is going to be computer repair. And this is another one that I actually really like. They make somewhere in between $100 and $4,200 a month. And this one actually makes about $20 an hour on average. So I actually had a friend who started a computer slash phone repair business, and he's doing pretty well with it right now. He's someone who did not go to college. He didn't really have any interest in it, but he was kind of a little bit entrepreneurial and he was also a little tech savvy. And so he combined those two skills and he started a computer repair business. And I think this is another one where you win even if you lose, just because of the fact that technology is so important and it's gonna be even more important in the next 20 to 40 years. And so everything you learn about using technology, repairing things, you know, installing programs, all that sort of thing is going to become extremely valuable. So this is another really great one. Highly recommend getting into this one if you're interested in entrepreneurship or technology. Number eight on the list is going to be babysitting, nannying, or caretaking. Now they make about $100 to $1,500 a month and they're making somewhere around $10 an hour. This is one of the most common side hustles out there. I think everybody's heard of this one, of course. Now, if you really like spending a lot of time around, you know, cute kids and like taking care of people's dogs, and stuff, then this one can be a great one for you and you're making money anyways. You can probably just catch up on 90 Day Fiance while you're doing it anyways. But overall, in terms of winning, even if you lose, I wouldn't rank this one very highly just because of the fact that I don't think you learn all that much in terms of marketable skills. Still, it's a really great one to do if you have some free time and you just wanna catch up on TV, so I still highly recommend it. Number seven on the list is going to be reselling items online, and this is one that I am actually extremely familiar with. I did this one for a long time throughout middle school, high school, and even college. And they say on here that you make between $100 and $1,500 a month, and you make around $20 an hour. Now, I found that that number, especially the one per hour, is a little bit off just because I focused on items that I knew that I could flip really easily, and so I didn't really waste that time on items that didn't make very much money. But overall, this is a great one to get into. And it's another one where you win even if you lose. You'll learn skills like marketing, research, all of that sort of thing. I wouldn't say this is as valuable as a sales job, for instance 
sentence, but it's still one where you're gonna learn a lot. It's also somewhat passive if you know which items to look for. Overall, another one that I highly recommend. Number six on the list is going to be tutoring or teaching, and this is another one that I did when I was in high school and college. I'm realizing that I think I kind of got lucky because I don't think I ever looked on a list like this. I just kind of stumbled upon these things, but they make somewhere in between $150 and $3,000 a month, and they make around $15 an hour. Now, I found that I made a lot more in terms of money per hour, but I didn't make as much in terms of the total amount per month. I never made like $1,500 in a month. This was just a cool little side hustle I did. I'm not gonna go over the whole story, but basically there's a test to get into pharmacy school called the PCAT. I got really good at that test and I showed people how they can study for the test in like one tenth the amount of time and do really well on it. And they would pay me between 80 and $150 an hour for me to show them my secrets and tell them what resources to use and exactly how to use them. I know a lot of people also go the language route, so they might tutor someone who is planning on going to university in the United States or moving to the United States on the vernacular of how we speak here. But yeah, this is a really good one. Um, there's a lot of online sites like Cambly you can get into in order to teach English. And then there's also a lot of stuff you can just do locally if you want to. I would say this is another one where you're winning even if you lose because the ability to teach someone something, the ability to you know take a complex subject and then package it in such a way that everyone can understand it is extremely important in my opinion. Next one on the list is going to be e-commerce or drop shipping. And this one you can make somewhere between $150 and $6,000 a month and they say you make somewhere around $15 an hour. Now this one is a little bit cringy because there's about a thousand courses online, you know, 15 year olds that became millionaires and want to teach you how to become a millionaire too with Shopify drop shipping. Very cringe. Definitely gotten blown out of proportion and it's not the same opportunity that it used to be. But with that being said, commerce is going towards more of an internet platform. And so this is a really good one to jump onto if you're a certain type of person that has the kind of mindset that you like creating online stores. I recommend not buying courses or if you do buy a course, just do one on Skillshare. Most of the information that you need to know you can find on YouTube. And I really recommend that you just try to do it without buying anything. Also, don't invest very much money into it you're probably gonna fail a lot in the beginning. And so it doesn't matter whether you have a course or not, you're gonna fail either way. And then you're gonna learn from that and get better and better. Please don't fall for all the scammy courses on YouTube. I don't want you guys to like go look up the courses just cause I recommended it in a video. But yeah, this can still be a really good one if you know what you're doing. Number four on the list is going to be freelance work and consulting. You can make somewhere between 200 and $4,000 a month and you make somewhere around $20 an hour. This is another one that I I really like especially the consulting part. So the key here is to become an expert and specialize in one area that's in really high demand. That's the mistake that so many people make. Like they'll be artists for instance and they're like, oh I can edit videos and I can do Photoshop and I can do this and I can do that and, and this and that and that. No, you don't want to do that at all. You want to specialize in one specific area that's in a very high demand. Get really, really good at that one thing, or maybe it's like two things, so maybe you combine art with business, for instance, but get really good at that one specific area, and then position yourself as an expert in that one thing. That is the key to freelancing and consulting. I see so many people making the mistake of saying, oh, I can do all these different things. No, 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 no do one thing. This is another one where I think you win big time even if you lose because you have to learn a bunch of different skills like uh, marketing, sales, you have to learn how to talk to people over the phone generally. So I highly recommend going into freelancing or consulting, especially the consulting part. I think the age of information is upon us and you having specialized knowledge that people wanna pay for is extremely valuable. I consulted with several different YouTubers who were in my niche who had grown uh, before me, for instance. I paid them really, really good money for them to give me some tips on how to grow on YouTube in this specific niche. And it was worth every penny. It helped me so much when it came to growing my YouTube channel. Number three on the list is going to be fitness training or coaching. Now they make somewhere between 200 and $3,000 a month and they make somewhere around $20 an hour. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, this one is a little bit iffy for me just because I think that this is a market that's extremely saturated. There's tons of you know personal trainers out there and people that try to start their own gyms 
gyms and stuff. And the reason for that is because a lot of people are extremely passionate about fitness. And this is a really cool one. I mean, you basically get paid to work out with someone else and get fit. That's awesome. So I do kind of like this one. And I'll be honest with you, I think in the future, I will probably hire a personal trainer myself. And that's even though I'm, I'm pretty frugal, but I just think that, you know, staying fit is one of the most important things you can do and it'll help you in every other area of your life. But yeah, I honestly have mixed feelings on this one. I don't know if I would recommend going in this direction unless it's truly like your number one passion in life. And if it is, I think you should get a little bit creative, probably start a YouTube channel, maybe a TikTok or something like that. Number two on the list is gonna be one that we're all familiar with, which is ride sharing. So this is gonna be like Uber or Lyft, but you can also count ones like DoorDash or something along those lines, Instacart for instance. And they can make somewhere between $350 and $3,000 a month. Now they make on average around $15 an hour, but I know just because of the fact that I've investigated this, that after you count in, you know, wear and tear on your car, gas, and a bunch of other different things, it's usually gonna be quite a bit less than that. Now I'd say the positives about doing ride sharing is it's something that almost anybody can do. So if you get fired from your job all of a sudden, this is something you can sign up for and probably start doing the very next day. And I think there's a lot of value in that because it's just so flexible and you can do it at any time. Let's say you just wanna make a little bit of extra money because you've got a vacation coming up or something like that. You get off work and you can just start ride sharing right away. Now the downside of this is this is not one where you win even if you lose. I really don't think you get that much out of this. You don't really learn that much from just giving people rides around your town. I guess if you're new to the town, you could kind of learn how to get around the town and just do it when you're first moving there and that would be a really convenient way. But other than that, I really just don't see how much you get out of this one. So I wouldn't really recommend it unless you need money right away because you got fired from your job or something along those lines. Number one on the list is a very, very good one and that is going to be selling or renting property. This one is going to be 500 to $7,000 a month and you're gonna make somewhere around $81 an hour. Now I've said in a lot of my past videos that one of the best possible investments that you can make is in real estate, and this is exactly what I'm talking about right here. So the thing about real estate is you have to do a lot of work up front and it does take quite a bit of skill. You're probably going to make some mistakes like the first one or two houses that you buy. And I know this because I have a ton of different real estate agents and real estate investors in my family. I'm actually personally waiting to buy real estate because I think for one, the market's going to drop soon. And then for two, I don't want to buy real estate in an area that I'm not living in or I don't plan on living for a while. And the reason for this is because I want to be able to check out my properties. I want to be very familiar with with the area. You'll notice in some areas that there'll be houses in one area that are worth $500,000 and then you go two blocks down and there's the same exact house that's only worth about 400,000. So I really do think it's worth it for you to be very familiar with the areas that you're buying in. I will start buying real estate in the future, but I wanna make sure that I'm settled and I'm in a place where I'm gonna live for the rest of my life or at least for a very long time. But overall, this is a great one. This is an amazing way to build your wealth. It takes patience, it takes a lot of time, but this one is probably one of the best possible investments that you can make. Now, I will say that there is a lot of really scammy, real estate courses out there. So be really careful with this. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Just keep that in mind. There's pretty much never going to be such a thing as a no money down house unless you can get one of your relatives to invest money with you or something along those lines. So, you know, just, just be here. There's scammy people on YouTube that are teaching some very suspect uh, techniques. Watch my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any comments, criticisms, ideas, etc. that you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.